Hi, welcome to Aloha training webinar number two. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be adding items, placing items on submenus, placing submenus on menus. We're going to be talking about categories and adding items, adding, adding items to sales and non-sales categories. We're going to talk about uh, setting events to roll specific menus and creating happy hour events. So what we're going to do uh, right now is we're going to start by adding some items. So in your database, usually when I write a database, it's set up by numeric categories. Usually my thousands start with my non-alc beverages. And then I have separator lines between things. And the reason I do this is so that you know when you're adding items. If it's an appetizer, it's going to go under your appetizers category. If it's a soup and salad, it's going to go under the soup and salad category. If it's a main item, it's going to go under your lunch or entree categories. And I leave plenty of spaces in between those for many more items to be added. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about adding an item. So what you're going to do is you're going to arrow down, you're going to find a blank spot. So to get to item maintenance, you're going to go to maintenance menu items. You're going to find a blank spot on the screen and then you're going to type in the name of the item. So if it was going to be a Julie's salad, you would type in the name and then hit enter. What that does is it brings it down to all three lines. Your chit name is what goes to the kitchen. The long name is what your guest sees. The short name is what goes on your submenu button. Uh, the chit name too you can be used for um, either Spanish speaking or you could use it for Japanese as well and it will print in the kitchen in those characters that you choose. So if you have a Spanish speaking kitchen and the rest of the house speaks English, then you can send back items in Spanish to your kitchen. Long name too does the same thing. Uh, you could program that to, to go into a different language as well. Your priority, that's for when you're going to be using coursing for uh, dinner courses, usually uh, fine dining. So you have a first course priority is going to be 10. Maybe second course is going to be a uh, salad and it might be a 20, 30, 40, so forth and so on. So that way when it goes to the kitchen on, underneath the seat, it courses it properly. Your recipe cost is how much it costs you to prepare and plate this item. So if you know, you're going to have salad, you're going to have some tomatoes, you're going to add up all of your costs and put in your recipe cost there. And what that does is in your product mix report, it takes your recipe cost less what you sell the product for times the amount sold and gives you a true profit for that item. Your default weight is uh, how many guest counts this is for. So a default weight, let's say uh, you wanted an entree to count as two guests, you could put a two in there. A multiplier, uh, if you had this item and you had a multiplier of two, what it would do is it would take this item and put it on the check twice. Your primary tax, uh, these are your, your food, liquor, beer, and wine taxes. Your secondary tax is if you had like a uh, downtown Little Rock, right now has a Little Rock uh, county tax or actually city tax and it's 1% and it's just of food and non-alc beverages. So we've got that program for uh, downtown and that's I think a zoning tax for downtown improvements right now. Vendor tax is if you had a vendor that was charging you uh, a tax that you had to report on a certain item. I think this goes more with a private club or entity. Your surcharge, if you were going to sell this item and it was going to be packaged and it was going to go in a, a nice to go box with 
silverware and that kind of thing, you might be able to set up a surcharge of, you know, a dollar or two dollars to cover your cost on, on the items that it was packaged in. Your print, this is the group that it prints to. So it's either going to go to a bar or it's going to go to a kitchen printer or it could go to several different kitchen printers. Uh, you can have up to five kitchen printers in a group. So it might go to the Expo, the Broil, the Fry, the Salad or Saute printer. Uh, concepts, we're not using that in any of our restaurants, so uh, we just leave that blank. Member of category, uh, all of your items are going to belong to one sales category. So it's either going to be food, liquor, beer, wine, or merchandise. Those are your fi five main categories in Aloha. And they could be in as many subcategories as you want, and we're going to talk about that here in a minute. And that kind of follows up with our uh, first webinar talking about categories and product mix reports. So all items that you sell, whether it's a modifier, whether it's merchandise, whether it's food, they're all going to go into the item part of this database. Now you can split off and create modifiers, and we're going to talk about modifiers in a few minutes. And we're going to—I'm going to show you how modifiers work. So. If used as a modifier, these are the things that you can do. You can apply the surcharge. You can combine item price with the base item. So let's say if Julie's salad, uh, you wanted to add chicken or shrimp or something to that, and you wanted to combine the base price, what you would do is Julie's salad might be $12, but if you wanted shrimp or you wanted uh, chicken or something added to that salad, for an additional price and you highlighted that, then what's going to happen is it's going to combine your $12 price with the item that you added to it. Highlight if modifier. What that is, is that goes in conjunction with uh, printing in the kitchen or at your bar so you can actually change the color that the item prints. So it normally is going to print in red if it's a modifier, black if it's a main item. Sometimes you can reverse the way it prints. You can either print the, the main item in red and the highlight highlight if modifier in black. And we'll, we'll go into that in a little while. <clears throat> print independently. Let's say we wanted Julie's salad to go to a salad printer, but we wanted the chicken that we were adding on to the salad to go to a grill printer because they're going to be grilling the chicken separately from the salad prep printer. So what we can do is we can highlight print independently and that goes in conjunction with this printer group here. So maybe Julie's salad is going to a salad printer, but the grilled chicken is going to be going to my grill printer. So on both of those items, you would, you would highlight this print independently. So my salad would go to one printer, and my chicken that goes on my salad would go to another printer. And that way, everything prints on the Expo printer, so the Expediter brings all the items together to sell them. Our price, that's how much our item price is. Our quantity pricing, that's if you were selling like a, a chopped meat or something. What you can do is you can use this quantity pricing to sell um, half pounds, quarter pounds, and pounds of things. This modified base price here, this is if you were using a double key for your liquor. So if you checked this, modify base price. So if you wanted to times your base price by one for a double, then what you would do is you would put one in here. Or if you wanted to charge 50% of that drink, you could put 50% in here. So when they hit like a vodka key and they went into a modifier group that said double, my vodka may be $6, but if you had a base price in here and you hit the double key, it would be $12, or it, you could do it at $9. So that's how your modified base price is on, on like a double key, for example. 
miscellaneous flag. This is for your revenue items such as gift cards, gift certificates, that kind of thing. When you flag this revenue item, what happens is the item then counts as a revenue item. So you're not paying taxes on it when you sell that item. It's only when that item is being redeemed for food that you, that you would pay the taxes on it. The item weight, once again, here is kind of like the weight in the, the first section over here in the item. If you wanted it to count as, as two, you would put in two. And where this would be helpful is if you wanted a head count on like a Valentine's Day dinner. And let's say you call it a Valentine's for two. They touch that key. It counts as two guests there. So that way you know, okay, I had... 40 guests here just by the fact that they they pressed the, the Valentine's for two key. So that would count as two guests in your guest count. This open item here, this ask for description and ask for price, that if you check both of these when you touch this Julie salad, what's going to happen is it's going to ask uh, for a description on that Julie salad. It's going to ask for a price on that Julie salad. So it's basically an open item. This print tab here, this is for printing on the guest check as well as on the kitchen or bar printer. So if you wanted to hold items then, but you wanted them to print anyways, then you would flag that. Never print on chit. If you flag that, it'll never print anywhere. It doesn't matter even if you have this printer group selected. If you go in and you tell it, never print, this overrides that default setting. This is um, The hierarchy is this is going to override that. Highlight if item. That goes in conjunction with your highlight if modifier uh, on your printer setup. The consolidate first modifier group, what that's going to do basically is um, it's going to consolidate, consolidate items with different modifiers and it's going to group it by the first modifier. This print in bold, that's going to print it in a bold uh, italic color, um, whether it's black or red. just depends on whether it's a main item, it's going to print in bold, or if it's a modifier, it's going to print in bold red. Uh, print recipe frequency. We have the ability to store recipes in Aloha, so if you wanted to know how to make a drink, so for example, somebody pressed the Bahama Mama key, and they would press the recipe key, and it will show you how to make that drink, as well as if you chose this, every time it would print out that recipe as well. So we don't usually flag that because uh, you can print the recipe from the front of the house without having it print every single time. Included modifiers. This is pretty cool for a counter service application. So let's say somebody comes up and they order a cheeseburger. What it's going to do is if you flag ketchup, lettuce, tomato, pickle, onion, when you touch your double cheeseburger, it's going to pop up and it's going to show you what comes on that cheeseburger. So when you're standing in front of the guest at a counter, basically they're going to ask you, well, what comes on that? And you can actually tell them this comes with lettuce, tomato, pickle, onion, special sauce, whatever's flagged. It will show on your modifier group a check mark. So you'll know that that item comes with those items. And that's good for um, like a taco bar as well. If somebody comes up and they ask, you know, what's on our Baja, Baja taco salad or whatever. And, and it makes the cashier look extremely intelligent if they can rattle off every single thing that's on each one of these items you ask them about. So that's kind of a cool thing for a counter service. Um, it's also pretty neat for uh, pizzas as well. So it will tell you the items that comes on a supreme pizza. So it might have, you know, olives, green peppers, that kind of thing. So when you're ordering 
a pizza when you're standing in front of the screen, you know that it's going to come with green peppers. And if they say, you know, I'm, I can't have green peppers, I'm allergic, then you know you're going to take off the green peppers from that pizza. And that's what we use this for is mostly pizza and counter service. So once you've priced your item, so Julie Caesar salad is going to be $12, or Julie's salad is going to be $12. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take this item number, 2016, and we are going to put it on a submenu. So we're going to go to Maintenance, Menu, Submenus. Once again, I've constructed the submenus. Everything's going to have a name. It's going to have either whether it's lunch or it's dinner. Uh, it's going to tell you whether it's a glass of red, a glass of white, that kind of thing. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to look for our soup and salad. Well, obviously we have two soup and salad keys here. We've got a soup and salad for lunch, and we've got a soup and salad for dinner. So you might not want to have Julie's salad at dinner. You might want to offer a different salad at dinner, so you'll have to make two different submenus, one for lunch and one for dinner if you have different... Uh, soups or salads served at dinner versus lunch. So we're just going to go into the submenu of lunch. We are double going to double click on a blank spot on the screen. We're going to put in that item number 2016. We're going to use item price. When I write a database, I write it with everything is priced at the item level and the reason I do that is because if you do not price this item at this item level it will not roll on your happy hour and we're going to discuss that in a few minutes as well. So once you've got the item on a submenu now what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to put your submenu onto a menu. So if you go to maintenance menu menus now we've put that a server lunch menu here so we know that we're in our soup and salad lunch so if we want to put this soup and salad lunch on a key what we're going to do is we're going to find a blank key we're going to double click that key we're going to go down here we're going to find our soup and salad lunch we're going to highlight that and we're going to hit OK so now we've got a lunch menu and we've got a dinner menu because sometimes you're not going to sell your lunch items at dinner and sometimes you're not going to sell your dinner items at lunch like baked potatoes and those kind of things that take a little bit longer. Okay, so once you've attached all of your submenus to your menus, you're ready to go. So now what you're going to see at the front of the house depends on what time it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Maintenance, System, Events, and we're going to schedule the events. So what we have to do is we have to hit Add Event, and if we want daily our lunch to roll at a specific time, what we're going to do is we're going to put the time here. So maybe we want our lunch to roll at 10 o'clock, so we'll put in 10 in the morning. Our event type is going to be our set server menu, and our menu is going to be server lunch. Okay, so you're going to do that with each one of your menus. So basically what you're going to have is you're going to have a set server menu to lunch, you're going to have a set server menu to dinner. So what it's going to do is at 1700 hours, it's going to roll your dinner menu and put your lunch menu off to the side. You're not going to have the ability to see this lunch menu. You will be able to sell items from this lunch menu if you assign the menu to a specific table. So it's not gone. It's just not readily available at that time. So we've done the same thing. Um, we're going to set our bar menu to bar lunch and set the, the bar menu to dinner bar. So the way it knows what menu you're going to get is if you're up here and you go to your job codes here and you're a server, when you're clocking in, what it's doing is it's going, oh, okay, you're a server. It's 10 o'clock in the morning. 
guess what? You're going to get your lunch menu. If you're a bartender and you clock in as bar, if this is not set, what's going to happen is you're going to get the default menu, which probably means that you're going to get a server lunch menu if you have not set your bar menus up. Okay. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to add some modifiers to Julie's salad. So let's say I want chicken and shrimp or salmon to be able to go on my salad. I want to be able to pick those. So what I usually do is I set up modifiers in my 10,000 range and they're called food modifiers. Now what happens with the food modifier when you set it up, if you notice this, the printer is set to none. So that means that this instruction, this modifier is following your main item to wherever your main item goes. And that's where that print independently tab comes into play with this whole situation. So if I went in and I wanted, let's say I'm going to add my chicken here. So at 10018 I added chicken and at 10019 I added my shrimp. Now what I could do is I could choose my printer of broil here, could go to my modifier tab and click on this print independently. So what's going to happen is when I touch that salad and I add either chicken or shrimp, my salad's going to go to a salad printer, but my add shrimp or my add chicken is going to go over to my broil printer. So that's where that comes into play with this. So now I've created 10018, which is add chicken, and 10019, which is shrimp. Now what we've got to do is we've got to put these on a modifier panel. So to do that you're going to go up to maintenance, menu, you're going to go to modifier groups. So let's say we needed to add a new group. So what you do is you just kind of peruse through here and you say, oh I don't have a, a, a number of 10010. So I can add a new one there. So what you're going to do when it's blue here, you're just going to type 10010 hit your enter key. Now you can add the name here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go add chick or shrimp. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to cl click screen flow required, which means when I touch Julie's salad, it's going to pop up and it's going to ask me if I want to add chicken or shrimp. Now I can hit my OK button to get through this unless I mark this a minimum of one and a maximum of one. That means I've got to choose one of these and that would be more for a forced modifier like a temperature choice. So usually if I wanted to add chicken and shrimp then what I would do is let's say I want to price my chicken at three dollars and I want to price my shrimp at four dollars. So I'm going to just go ahead and price those there. Now I'm going to attach this modifier group onto my item of Julie's salad. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up and we're going to find 2016 which was Julie's salad. We're going to click on the modifier tab and then we're going to go search for that modifier we just added which was our add chicken or shrimp. So once we've done that now what we can do is we can put a salad add-on button here. So maybe you want extra croutons, extra tomatoes, or you want no croutons, no tomatoes. So whatever order you put these things in is how it's going to go to the kitchen. So let's say it's going to say Julie salad, add chicken. Then it might say no tomato, no onion, extra cheese, and then for maybe modifier three you're going to have a dressing choice. So all of these things are going to follow my main item of Julie's salad because I've got 
the kitchen printer selected where it's going and my items are selected to go to none which means they're going to follow my main item through to the kitchen. So everything starts at the item level and then it either goes to your submenu or it goes to a modifier group. So once you get that all done, then you're ready to go ahead and do a utilities and a refresh data. What that does is it sends down all your changes to the front of the house for uh, testing. Barry, are you still with me? Okay, do you have any questions? Sure. Um, actually, the t-shirts wouldn't be a revenue item. The only thing that's a revenue item would be a gift certificate, a gift card, that kind of thing. Um, a revenue item, what it does basically is, you know how you pay taxes on like your food, liquor, beer, and wine at the end of the month? The revenue item, when sold, doesn't go towards your sales until it's a redeemed item. So if my husband and I go in for dinner and we've got one of your gift cards, we purchased it as a revenue item, but we're redeeming it as a sale. So at that point, then, you know, we're going to ring up food and all of that, and all of that gets taxed at that point. All right, we're going to talk about happy hour now, so I'm going to go ahead and mute you for a moment. All right, so we've placed our items, we've got our prices, they're on submenus, we've put modifiers with them. What we're going to do is we're going to go down and we are going to find our beer. So we are going to create a happy hour for our beer. So let's say uh, our Fat Tire, Amstel, Heineken, and uh, Chimay is all going to be on a happy hour. What we're going to do is we are going to click on Maintenance, Menu, Price Changes. It's going to take you into a blank screen. We're going to choose one, and we're going to call this Happy Hour. We're going to put a start date. And an end date. And I usually put a, a year in the future for that because what you're doing is you're scheduling the happy hour in a different place. So this happy hour event can reside here forever. If you don't schedule it, then it's not going to fire the event anyways. So once we've created an event called happy hour, and this can be anything. I mean, it can be Monday apps. It might be Taco Tuesday. It might be Wine Wednesday. It can be anything. You can have many, many happy hour events rolling continuously at different points in the day. You can even have overlapping happy hours as long as they're on different items. So what we're going to do is we're going to go find our beer. That was at the 13,000 level. So what we're going to do is we are going to flag them on the left-hand side. And then on the right-hand side, we are going to put our happy hour price. So if we wanted it to be 250 at happy hour, we would just go ahead and put 250 all the way down here. All right, so once you have to be super careful with this because if you have a flag set here, a check mark, and you have a zero price over here on your right hand side, guess what? You're giving away your beer. It's zero price. So be very careful when setting up your happy hours that if you've got a check mark here, you better darn well have a price over here or you're going to have a great happy hour because nobody's going to tell you if you're 
charging zero price for a beer. They're going to tell you if they're, you're overcharging. They'll never tell you if they're getting their beer for free. It's going to be a pretty happy hour for them. So once you got that all set up, what you're going to do is you're going to hit save here. All right, so now notice you're, you're, you can't select anything here. That's because you're not in an edit mode. You must be in edit mode to add check marks. Okay, so once you're done checking all your items, you're going to hit your save button. That takes you out of edit mode. So now it's time to go schedule our happy hour. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to maintenance, system, events. We're going to add an event. Now this can be weekly. Maybe you just want to run happy hour on Monday night because you want to increase your guests on Monday. Or you can run it daily, which means it's going to run Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Or you can do it monthly on the first month, which would be January, second month, February, so forth and so on. So if you wanted to run this monthly happy hour, then you would just put the, the month in here. Now let's say you just wanted to run this one thing for Valentine's Day, for example. What you would do is you would just put in the date of Valentine's Day. But what we are going to do is we're going to run this daily. So we want our happy hour to start at 3 o'clock. So 1500 is 3 o'clock. It's going to be a number 25, which is set price change. And then once you've got all of the particulars in here, you're going to click your OK button. Now it's going to say, hey, what price change do you want to run? So if you had a whole bunch of price changes, you'll, you'd arrow down, pick the price change event it's going to be, highlight it, and hit OK. So now you're starting your happy hour at 1500 Now you've got to disable your happy hour. Guess what? It's always happy hour. Yay! So what you're going to do is you're going to add event again to disable the happy hour. So we're going to turn it off daily at 1700 hours. And then the disable price change is a number 30. And then we are going to want to disable our happy hour price change. Okay, so once that's done, once again, you can hit your Done button, and then you can send a refresh data down, and then you'll have a happy hour that runs from 5 to, or from 3 to 5. On events, we're going to talk about a couple of other events. So we're going to go into events here again. You have a wide variety of events that you're able to use. This is particularly one of my fun ones that I like to use. This set submenu item. So let's say the chef comes up with some amazing thing and he's got leftovers, maybe he's got prime rib leftovers and you want to do a prime rib sandwich for just one day and one day only to, to get rid of the leftovers. What you're going to do is you're going to set the submenu item. So you can have it weekly or you can do it special on just this one day because we've got lots of prime rib leftover and we want to make sandwiches. So what you'll do is put the date in there, put the time that you want it to roll. So maybe you want it to roll at 10 o'clock in the morning on maybe the 19th of February. So once you click OK, it's going to ask you, hey, what submenu do you want it on? Well, what we'll find like a uh, maybe a deli item submenu. What position do you want it to run in? Our positions are located under our submenus, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. Let's say we want it in position 7. Then it's going to ask you for the item to set. Well, what you've done is you've already put this in your database as a prime rib sandwich. So you just go down, you find what you created like a prime rib sandwich, or we're just going to, for instance, call it a top roast sirloin sandwich. 
well, how much do you want to sell this for today and today only? So we're going to put it in at $9.99. Okay, so basically what we've done is we've set up a special that's only going to appear on our submenu and it's going to appear on our deli item submenu in position 7. So if you count down 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, this is position number 7. This is position 8, 9, 10, so forth and so on, position 21 down here. So what's going to happen on this day and this day only is this top sirloin key is going to appear and you're going to be able to sell this sandwich and then tomorrow it's going to be gone. So that's kind of a cool thing. I have lots of people call me and go, the weirdest thing happens. At like 11 o'clock, this item appears and it goes away. It's like magic. It's actually not magic. It is programmed to do that. And that's how you set an item to appear and disappear off of your submenus on a day or a weekly basis. Barry, do you have any questions about that? Sure. This you are correct. Good good question. Good question. <laughs> exactly. Correct. Correct. <laughs> Right. Good. Well, I think that's, I think we've covered everything that I wanted to cover today. Do you have any other questions? Yes. Correct. That is correct. Right, right. There'll be 10 events. There'll be um, a set price change for Monday, set price change for Tuesday, set price change for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and then there'll be a disable for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That's correct. Okay, great. Exactly.